Hello everybody, I'm Chris Lynch. I'm a member of the Clouds Research and Development Team. Today I'm going to take you through a tutorial on building a simple simulation within Clouds. The steps that we will use in building our simulation follow the same process that is presented within the Clouds User Manual. Now before we start to build anything into an actual simulation, we want to have a solid understanding of what system it is we're trying to represent and how we want to represent that system within a simulation. That being said, the system of interest that we're using for this tutorial is a highly congested toll booth area. Now this toll booth has a high level of congestion between the hours of noon and 2 a.m., so a 14 hour stretch every day. And the ultimate goal is to reduce the amount of congestion seen at the toll booth during these times. At this point, I would suggest that you draw a simple doodle on a just piece of paper of what your view of the system is, and then we'll use that to go forward in building the simulation. So I will transfer to my doodle now. Now this is just a simple doodle that I put together based on the brief system description that we were given so far. I've identified toll booth A and toll booth B that each have a single line of vehicles that can come up to them in order to pay the toll and then exit. Expanding on our previous description, I've also included that we have two different types of vehicles coming into the system, truckers and cars. We will use this doodle to help build the foundation of our simulation within clouds. After logging into clouds, we're going to select the new template in the upper left corner to start building our simulation from scratch. Now the simulation starts blank, having selected the new block on the simulation page. Now before we start building the actual simulation, we're going to set some of our high-level components. Now to start off with, the simulation is set to private, which I'm going to leave while I'm building the simulation, and then I'll switch it to public at the end so that other members of the Clouds community can view the model. But I'm going to go ahead and give the simulation a name and provide a brief description of the model. I'm going to name this model Tutorial Toll Booth Simulation Base Model. For my brief description, I've put in that this is a simulation corresponding to the Clouds Toll Booth Tutorial Part 1 for displaying how to build a simple simulation using clouds. So that then when you come and look at this model, you know that it relates back to this video. I'm going to skip over the detailed description for now, but I will go ahead and add some tags onto the simulation. For my tags, I've put in that this is a Clouds tutorial series, toll booth, since that's the system that we're trying to represent, and introductory example is this is an intended as an introduction level video. Now the tags will make it so that when you're on the landing page, the previous page that we were just on, that in the search bar up top you can type in any of these names and this will be one of the models that will then appear in the resulting list. Now we want to put in the simulation length. Referring back to our system description, we know that we're looking at a toll booth from the hours of noon till 2 a.m. or 14 hours, but we're going to want to go ahead and model this in minutes. So we'll convert the 14 hours into 840 minutes and then we need to switch our time unit from seconds to minutes. But we do want to go ahead and save our model and ensure that now everything we've put into the environment section is at least stored and we can view it from our landing page. So I'm going to jump back to the landing page now and we see that our tutorial simulation is here. Currently the picture is blank because we haven't built any blocks within the simulation yet. But we can click back on the simulation and then it returns us to where we were on our design process. Now that we're ready to go ahead and build the actual simulation, we want to jump back and look at our doodle to get an idea for what blocks we want to pull in to build the actual simulation. Building a simulation within clouds is very simple. Everything that we need falls within the design tab. We will touch on most of the elements here in building this simulation, but additional details on any of these blocks can be found within the clouds user manual. Now to build the simulation, all of these elements can just be dragged straight into the simulation area to create the new components. Once they're in that area, you can just click and drag an element to reposition it. Clicking the X in the upper right hand corner will delete the block. Additionally, holding your cursor over the name of the block will show you the properties contained within that block. 
Now that we've covered the basic ways to interact with the cloud simulation environment, we can move on to building our toll booth simulation. Based on the system description that we were provided and the doodle that we put together, we know that we want two toll booths, each manned by a single employee. So we'll start by building those. A process block can serve to represent a toll booth. Now the process will represent the amount of time that it takes a toll booth attendant to process a vehicle coming to the toll before that vehicle can leave the system. Now double clicking on this will open up the property window and we're going to rename it to booth A. Then we're going to pull on a second process for our second booth. Double click to open up its process window and we're going to name this one booth B. Now we need to represent the employees that will man the booths, and so we'll do this by capturing them as resources. And so we'll drag a resource for each booth onto the simulation environment. Go ahead and rename the top one to the booth A attendant, and then we'll save that. The bottom one we're going to rename to booth B attendant, and we'll save this one as well. Now we also know that we have two types of entities that are coming into this system, the cars and the truckers. Now the entity block, represented with the E in the center, allows us to represent an entity that will be coming into the system. So we'll start by calling this entity a car, and we can actually set a car image for that car. And then we'll see the block updates to reflect the car image and the new name. And then we'll create our second entity for the trucker. and we'll set this image to that of a truck. And then we see the truck image and the trucker name appear before. Now this will create the entity type, but it won't actually put entities into the system. For that, we need an arrival node. And that is represented by the green open door. So we'll drag out two arrival nodes. And for the top one, we'll call this car arrivals. And we'll fill out the specific values for this in a minute. For the bottom one, we're going to call this trucker arrival, and then we'll save this one. Now we also know that when a vehicle comes up to a toll booth, if there's already somebody being processed at the toll, that it waits in line. Now in order to capture this line, then we need a queue for each of these two processes, and that's represented by the blue queue block. So we'll drag on two queues for the two toll booths and we'll rename them to match their corresponding toll booths. So we'll have booth AQ and booth BQ. Another component that we want to capture is the entities exiting the system. That can be done through the exit block represented by the red closed door. By assigning an exit block for booth A and an exit block for booth B, we can count the number of trucks and cars that leave booth A and the number of trucks and cars that leave booth B. Now at this point there's only two components missing. The first is when a car and a truck enters the system it can go to either of the toll booths and to represent that we want a decision node. So the red diamond shaped D is a decision node and we will rename this to lane choice. And I'm going to go ahead and rename the two exit nodes to uh, booth A exit and booth B exit. Now that we have all of our blocks, the only thing left is to connect all the blocks together so that we can show how the entities will progress through the system. And this is as simple as selecting a square within the block and dragging it to a square on another block to show that they're connected. So we're going to go ahead and connect both of the toll booths with their exits, both of the queues to their processes, now we need to capture the entities coming into the system, the cars and the trucks, and how they enter into the toll booth lines. To do this, we're going to link them into the decision node, and then connect the decision node to both of the queues. Now we've established the foundation for the model, and we can move on to assigning the specific values to each of our blocks. To finish building out the model, we need some additional information on how the entities are arriving to the system, and how they're being processed at each of the toll booths. This provides us a look at some of the assumptions that help us constrain the model as well as giving us that specific information. 
So we're assuming that all vehicles can make it through the toll, that they'll wait in line for as long as it takes, nobody will leave the system early, and they won't change lanes once they're in a lane. Both of the lanes are managed by an actual person, neither of them are automated, and we see that booth A takes on average 30 to 120 seconds to process a vehicle, and booth B takes 35 to 135 seconds on average to process a vehicle. And we also have that the cars arrive on an exponential distribution with mean of two minutes, and that truckers arrive with a triangular distribution from half a minute to 1.6 minutes with a mean of 0.75 minutes. Now we can take that information and input it directly into our existing simulation. So double clicking on the car arrival block will allow us to input the distribution for how our cars are arriving. Each of our entity types are contained in this drop down menu and we want to go ahead and assign the car to the car arrival. And then for the inner arrival time we just saw that there's an exponential with mean of two minutes. So we'll go ahead and set that here. We're also assuming that one car is arriving at each of these time steps. Now we'll do a similar thing for the trucker arrivals. We'll set the entity type to trucker. And for the inner arrival time, we saw that we have a triangular distribution. And we fill in the corresponding values for the triangular distribution. Now we also need to set the lane choice. The first time we looked at this, this option wasn't here, but now that the output of this block has been linked to other blocks, we have the option to have the entities move by either chance or by entity type. So we're just going to assume that each of the entities has a 50-50 chance of going to either lane. So we'll set that here and then they'll follow this 50-50 split while they move through the system. We don't need to alter anything on the queue. Now coming back to the resources, we're going to make sure that there's one of each booth attendant available. And we're not going to set an image just so that the resource symbol stays apparent. Then we need to go into the actual toll booths and set some properties for the toll booth. First, we want to say that yes, there is a resource required in order for somebody to access the toll booth. And so for booth A, we're going to set that uh, booth A's attendant is required and it will be utilizing the single attendant that's available. And we want to make sure that the attendant is released upon completion. So when that attendant has processed the car and accepted their toll, that car will leave the system and this will leave the attendant available to process the next vehicle that comes up. Now we also want to go ahead and set the processing time that this attendant takes to get the car through the system. So we're going with the uniform distribution of 30 seconds to 120 seconds, or since we're looking at the model in terms of minutes, 0.5 minutes to 2 minutes. Similarly, for booth B, we're going to require that the booth B attendant is utilized for this toll booth. We still want him released. And then we're going to set the processing time for this entity, which comes out to 0.6 minutes and 2.25 minutes. Now that's everything that we need to assign internally within the model, but we want to make sure that we go ahead and save. Now we are ready to build the simulation so that we can run it and view the results. However, first we need to set a chart time interval so that when it creates the output graphs we can view what's going on in the simulation. Now I'm going to go ahead and build the simulation. And then we can run the simulation and this will show us the animation of the simulation over time for the 840 minutes that we've set. And so we can see the entities coming into the system. As entities are built up in the queues, we see the um, green line increasing in size, represent the number of entities that are in that queue. And we also see when a booth is being occupied, it's red, and when it's not being occupied, it turns white. And then we have the counters collecting the total number of the cars and trucks that are exiting the system. I'm going to go ahead and exit that, and we can view the results from the simulation. So this brings us up a result view screen that provides us statistics on all of the blocks that we've created. So we can see on total 884 trucks arrived in the 840 minute interval, and 424 cars arrived due to the inner arrival distributions that we set for the two different types of entities. Now for, for the booth queues, we can see how many entities traveled through the queue during that whole process, cars and trucks, and we can see the average queue size 
and the maximum and average wait time for each of the entities coming through the two different queues. Now for the actual toll booths, booth A and B, we can see the average time they took to process each of the vehicles and the total time that they were idle during the simulation run. And for the attendance, we can see how often that attendant who was working each booth uh, was being utilized. Booth A attendant was not being utilized 100% of the time while Booth B's attendant was. And we can see how many vehicles at our decision node were being split between the two different exits. And then we know exactly how many vehicles exited from Booth A and how many exited from Booth B along with how many cars and how many trucks total left each of those systems. We can also get a visual representation of all the data we just saw above in graphical form at the bottom of this output. Now with the 93% utilization for the booth A attendant and the 100% utilization of the booth B attendant is a very high overall utilization. The original statement that we had was that we were dealing with a high volume toll booth area between the hours of noon to 2 a.m. and the goal is to reduce congestion on this system. So now we have a base scenario with which we can make adjustments and test some alternative configurations for attempting to reduce the level of congestion at this toll booth while providing us a baseline from which to compare the original congestion level of which we're going to focus on the utilization percentages of the toll booth attendees and try and get them closer to an 80 percent utilization. Part two of this tutorial will look at how we can take our base toll booth simulation, make adjustments to the system, and try to get the toll booth employee utilization percentages closer to 80%. Thank you.